Okay, so good morning everyone. The agenda for the today's session. We are going to start with the, the discussion on a Git. So Git is a version control system, which is one of the component associated with our DevOps life cycle. We have already discussed about this uh, what is DevOps, what are all the advantages of going for DevOps, what are all the tools associated with the DevOps, and so on and so on. Here, what we are going to discuss is that we are going to recall uh, what is DevOps, what are all the tools that we can make use of in DevOps, what are all the various phases of uh, lifecycle associated with the DevOps. So here we have a program developed. If you let me consider, we are going to develop the project. The project may be developed either using a Java, or it may be .NET, or it may be C, C++, whatever it may be, any language that we make use of. For developing a project, we will be deputing some developers. Okay. So here, traditionally, we follow some waterfall model. So here, this uh, waterfall model uh, is having a lot of issues. In waterfall model, you guys are aware of here. We need to go for a requirement gathering phase. The first phase is a requirement gathering. So here we need to have an interaction with this client to gather what the client is in need of. What are all the functionalities that is associated with the project? Everything that we need to have a requirement gathering. So here this requirement gathering will be done by a business analyst, a role by the business analyst. The business analyst uh, will go to this uh, client location and they do requirement gathering. It took minimum 20, 30 working days okay, to gather this requirement for a project which involves uh, around six months of uh, development. So during this uh, gathering phase, uh, the BA, the business analyst uh, will take care of the functionalities uh, that is uh, needed for that particular project with uh, respect to the requirement. And based upon that, what we do, the second phase of activity, once the entire requirement has been gathering, we do this design. In terms of design, we need to go for this database design. What are all the tables, what databases that we need to have, what are all the tables, what should be the relationship between the tables. Okay, then the UA design, database design, then user interface design and then the project design, okay, the workflow design, all these design need to be done, okay. It is a sketch which represents what are all the functionalities need to be incorporated, how a user interface screen need to be looked like, and what should be the backend, how these tables need to be connected, what are all the constraints need to be enforced on that particular table, like the design phase will be takes place. We took another 20 working days to complete this design phase. Then after that, based upon what we have designed, now then the third phase of activity may happen. So now the third phase may be a system. According to the design made, the system implementation, we call this as a coding phase. So in this coding phase only, we have a, this particular task uh, need to be taken by the multiple developers. We assign a group, okay, containing developers. The developer may do the code associated with that. Then we have a hierarchy. So under the bottom we have developers. On top of we have a team lead. Uh, and on top of it we have a program manager, project manager. On top of it we have a program manager, okay, delivery manager. Okay, this is the hierarchy that is followed. Developer does the task of uh, developing the code as assigned by the team lead. The team lead will coordinate multiple developers. Each and every developer will do this. Once all the activity, all the developer develops the code, then only the code will be applied to testing. This is the task that we are dealing with our traditional waterfall model. We have our waterfall model. So here uh, for this activity, it took minimum uh, 90 to 100 work days, a mid level project. It took the coding phase, it took a minimum 90 to 100 work days. During this phase, they perform the following test, they perform this unit test. Each and every developer may perform a unit test. And everything is perfect. All the developer completed developing is code. Then we have an integration test. So all the code will be integrated to check whether uh, there is a conflict between these uh, various models developed by the developer. 
then it, they will perform uh, this performance test uh, what we call as a performance test or load test okay these are all the test traces uh, which took for next 10 days so here this test will take care by the test also the QA team will also do this inspection everything is perfect okay system is tested and the quality is assured by the QA team then then only the system is uh, deployed to the end user deployment phase will take place in this deployment phase, uh, what are all the people here up to now, from the start of uh, development uh, up to this uh, testing, the members of uh, developer team, the members of uh, testing team, the BA team, business analyst team, all they play the role up to this. In the deployment, what they need, here we need to have a network team, uh, members from a network team. And we need to have uh, members from uh, this uh, storage team, sand, we call this as a sand team, storage team. And we need to make use of this uh, database team to take care of uh, managing of this uh, data. And we have an uh, application team, application, all the application services associated need to be managed. Okay, networking, internet working, okay, to, to care of uh, making this uh, project accessible across world. Okay, these are all the team members, uh, infra team, the infra, we call this team as an infra team. Okay, networking, internet working, storage, databases, uh, so server administration, etc, etc. Okay, so these are all the teams uh, which takes care of uh, deploying the project to the end user. Then all this, so this uh, deployment uh, according to this uh, requirement, according to what are all the uh, software, what operating system that is associated in the development and testing phase need to be implemented here in this deployment. Here there should not be any conflict uh, in between this operating system, between these uh, tools, between the languages that they have used. Everything need to be synced. Okay, what uh, version, what revision that, that they made on this development and tested phase need to be carried on in the deployment phase also. Here in this case, what problem? It is very very difficult. So why? Uh, a development activity has been done as a separate entity without any knowledge of the infra team. So the infra team will feel it's a great difficult. Okay, great difficult. So here uh, that to do this uh, implementation. So these are all the some of the problems associated with this the traditional waterfall model. But there is no interaction between this uh, team of developers and the team of uh, this implementation engineers. That is the deployment team. There is a conflict between these two teams and also in terms of uh, other difficulties has been concerned. You take each and every phase uh, takes place a uh, minimum of one month of duration. The total duration that uh, the coder need to wait, the huge waiting time for the code deployment. Developer, once he develops the code, need to wait for five to six months uh, to make a check whether the code satisfies the client. Also because the gathering, the design, coding phase, uh, testing phase, uh, integration, uh, deployment, then only it will be accessible by the client and after that the client will give a feedback and according to the feedback the developer's code is evaluated whether the code uh, satisfies the need or not then only the developer may aware of. Here the code deployment time is uh, very very huge. Okay, so these are all the, here it took a lot of duration to go for this. So all comes from that what they did they go for a concept called as Agile Technologies. Okay, now we go for this Agile. What Agile will do? Agile will divide this uh, project into various uh, smaller, smaller uh, phases. You, you divide, we call these phases as a sprints. Okay, so we define the set of activity to be completed. Each and every sprint may be of uh, two to three weeks maximum. Of, it depends upon this particular company, two to three weeks. For example, a project if it took uh, six months, okay, it, oh, it as of a traditional model, it won't take uh, entire six months to implement. Here they will uh, did a first model, they will do a first phase, the first sprint, and they will uh, implement that, that, that during this uh, sprint there will be multiple developers, developer one, developer two, of the end developers, developer develops the code, and they manage the code in a repository. And each and every developer, they will make integrate the code into the single entity. Then they will apply these tests, unit tests, integration tests, and so on. And they will deploy into the client environment. Okay, the client will evaluate. So based upon that, the client will give a feedback. 
immediately the feedback will be received to the user. So within this two to three weeks of the sprint, based upon that feedback, what they do, the developer will refine the code. The feedback may be uh, making change to the existing models or adding some new models, making the functionality changes. The particular code may not uh, satisfy what it is specified during the requirement gathering. So these sort of feedbacks has been uh, received by the developers. Once they are aware of whether the code is success or not, immediately they do this process will continue. This process of development, the process of uh, compiling, once the developer develops, it will uh, compile uh, and it will uh, compile and it will get packaged and it will apply to unit test integration test and it will be deployed and it will be monitored at this uh, client side and client uh, based upon that the client gives the feedback. Every process will be a continuous one. And then we have sprint. Then at the end of uh, second or third week, we may have either the sprint is uh, success or fail. Then here we will define what we ca call as the stories. Stories are nothing but the task that is assigned to a particular developer, developer one, developer two. We have stories one, stories two, stories three. Like uh, each and every developer will assign a particular set of tasks that need to be completed, and those tasks have been termed as the stories. Okay. So we have a agile master. We call this as a scrum master or agile master. This master uh, will define the task, will define the sprint, the, the sprint duration, two weeks of sprint duration, total sprints, ten sprints for this project. Each sprint is two weeks, and these are all the stories uh, for that particular developer. Then based upon that, the developer, each and every one will have if you need to play his hands. If they need to make the hands dirty in that uh, particular uh, sprint. And uh, each and every one may need to be individual player in this case. So here, this process being it is uh, continuous, uh, we need to do some automation. So this is the agile. Agile will make this uh, development activity develop in a faster manner. But what happens once everything is perfect until this uh, developer uh, testing? At the end of uh, after completion of this uh, development, it need to be implemented in the Production. Here, this implementation team doesn't aware what is happening in this uh, development and testing phase. So here there is a frequent uh, request being the sprint duration is of a two to start span of time. And uh, being uh, here uh, they need to do this implementation immediately. There is a huge pressure in terms of this deployment team. The deployment team uh, being they, there is no coordination. Okay, the development activity by adopting this agile uh, has been a great success. But in case of uh, deployment, okay, this uh, development sprints are very short duration and it is well planned. Okay, and the development uh, happen in a very quick time. But the operation point of view here, it, they feel very difficult. Okay, in maintaining this, in, in, in maintaining the infrastructure, in creating the infrastructure according to this. Okay, so here, uh, there is a conflict between this development team and the deployment team. To overcome from these things, we come across a new concept called DevOps. Here in this case, it is a culture. We call this DevOps is a culture which need to be adapted with an intention that both the developer team and the operation team has the end-to-end -end responsibility. Okay. They both involved all in all the activities. The DevOps culture involves both the developer and operation team to aware what each and everyone is uh, doing in the particular project. A developer may aware of what is going to be happen in the infra. The infra team may aware of what is happening in the development. So there is a close association between both the team. Start from the beginning of the project development up to this project deployment. Okay. So this is a culture, okay, which makes uh, what we achieved in this agile in the software development, the same sort of agile uh, in both development as well as deployment can be considered as a DevOps, okay. So this is the DevOps. It integrates the developers and operation teams uh, with an intention to improve collaboration, to improve the productivity, to improve to satisfy the end customer, okay, by way of adopting uh, yeah, face by face of activity and immediate implementation. Okay, so that is DevOps. Here in this case, what do we need to do? So here, uh, 
we want to follow the agile process here in deployment also. Here, uh, let me imagine this DevOps life cycle, uh, it will be look like this thing. We have a, a project developed using either a Java. These are all some of the tools associated with. We may have a Java, we may have a .NET, we may have a C, C++, we may have a Python, PHP, okay, anything, any web development or application development, you take this. So here this project has been divided into various models. Each and every model will be assigned to developer. Let me have, we have developer, n number of developers. What the developer will do, the developer will develop the code. And you need to maintain the code. Okay, so the developer need a repository to maintain the code. That repository we call it as a VCS. In this repository, the developer may do certain certain modifications. He need to retain the old code. It may be referred in later cases. For example, on day one, okay, on day one, a developer may develop a code which run into 100 lines of coding, and it will be tested and. Uh, Based upon that feedback, he may need to do some changes on the code. It may be either some modifications on the code with addition of 120 lines. So here he need to maintain not only the new updated 120 lines of code, also at some later point of time, if the client feels that the, the old code is good enough compared to that of this new code, he need to revert back to the old code. Therefore, he need to maintain the history of changes. So he need to maintain the history of changes that is done on the code. What are all the things that has been changed? What sort of uh, so far that is everything need to be maintained. For that, he need to go for a tool called a, a version control system (VCS) or we call other name SCM (Software Configuration Management Tool) or a version control system. So what are all the tools that is used for this uh, version control system? We have this tool uh, SVN, we have this uh, tool this uh, GIF, we have this tool uh, Perforce, we call this uh, B4, okay? There are several several tools uh, that is used for this uh, version control system. So here there are, we have this uh, sub series, okay? See, we have uh, another tool called the clear case. This is a subversion. We have a tool called a CVS, etc. There are several, several tools. So here, using these tools, uh, the developer may maintain this uh, code. And what are all the changes that is made also maintained with uh, separate, separate versions. All the code developed by the, all the developers will be managed in these tools. Yes. So once the developer develops the code, okay, let me imagine he develops a program by name Java, one dot Java, a program, one dot uh, Java has been developed by the developer. So what he need to do, the second phase, the developer, what he need to do, he need to do this uh, compilation. What is uh, compilation and he need to run the code. Okay, so he need to package all the, so here the developer on the particular model may have one dot Java, Another the two dot Java and three dot Java. Three files, three Java files uh, may uh, he may develop to incorporate a particular functionality. So here it need to be VCN version control system, not VCN. Okay, VC version control system. So here compile. What is compile? So it checks for syntax and semantics. Syntax check and semantics check. Everything is uh, perfect, uh, then uh, we need to run. Okay, so if it is perfect, uh, all these things need to be combined into a single package, like a jar file. It may be a jar package, or it may be a var package, or it may be a MSI, if it is a Windows application, if it is a MSI. If it is Linux, uh, we need to go for this RPM manager. Okay, so here if it is a Docker, we need to go for this uh, Docker package. So here, this phase, uh, after the development, it need to be compiled, it need to be run, checked, and it need to be packaged. So compiling, then under this, uh, during this after the successful compilation, it will test for some test cases. It will apply with some test cases, and the test cases will check whether it satisfies the requirement or not. So who is responsible for doing this activity? Okay, for that we need to make use of uh, certain certain tools. We call these tools as a build tool. Okay, here this is tool is a SEM or version control tools. We have other set of tools called source code build tools. 
So here we can make use of a tool like a junk mavens for building. We can make use of tools like maven. We can make use of a tool for a Hudson. We make use of this bamboo yeah, Atlassian product. Okay. Uh, these are all the build tools. The tool what it will do. So here it will take this uh, file and it will uh, compile, it will run and it will create a package according to this. Then after that, each and every developer are developed a code. Okay, developer 2 may have a particular package. Developer 2 may have a particular package. Next phase, what we need to do, everything need to be integrated. All the codes are associated with this developer 1, developer 2. After successful build, it need to be integrated. So either it need to be integrated uh, first time or we may have a uh, addition uh, software that is already product has been developed. The developer one need to make some changes uh, in its uh, code uh, after getting a feedback from a client. Based upon that, he, need a, he did a change and the changed uh, model need to be integrated with the existing. We need to go for this integration. So who will perform this integration? Once again, we make use of this uh, tool like Jenkins. We make use of this tool like bamboo, which is a, a we call this as an integration tool. Okay, we have build tools, we have this integration tools. Then the integration tools like Jenkins will invoke Maven for this opposite activity. Okay, it will do uh, all this uh, compile run package and it will take and it will integrate with these existing models. Okay, so the package is here. What we have compiled the created and package. Then the package need to be managed in a particular area. The package we call it as a artifacts. The package that is created associated with a particular model is called as artifacts. Okay. The package may be a stored, it may be a jar, war, MSI, anything. Here we need a storage. We need a storage to maintain this package. That for we make use of a tool like artifactory. We make use of this Nexus. These are all the tools associated with maintaining these uh, packages. And Jenkins what it will do, it will do this integration. Okay, it will do this integration. So now we have developer developed the code, and the developers developed the code uh, has been managed by this version control tools. Uh, these are all some of the tools. Then after that, that the particular uh, program need to be compiled and need to be run and perform unit tests. And for that, we need to go for tools like uh, the builder tools, uh, Maven, Hanson, Bamboo. Then laterly, once it is a package, the package is called Artifactory. We call these uh, artifacts. Uh, here, the artifacts need a repository, need a storage place. Then we make use of tools like Artifactory and Nexus, which is comes integrated with these Jenkins. Then after that, uh, all the developer completed developing the corresponding models. It need to be integrated. And uh, that integration done by integration tools like once again Jenkins and Bamboo. These tools uh, in turn invoke uh, the Maven for this uh, process. Now everything is perfect. Okay. Then after that, uh, what it need? It need to be delivered. Where it need to be delivered? So then it will be applied to this uh, testing. Okay. It will apply to this uh, QA test, quality analysis. It will apply to this uh, test cases. So what is the difference between a QA and test? The test is used to identify whether there is a bug in this particular product. The QA is used to identify whether uh, any refinement need to be made. So what we cannot do automatically. What are all the things that we can do it automatically can be performed under the test. For example, we have a design interface under which we have a button here. So the button color may not be satisfied. The button need to be placed here in right corner instead of left corner. These sort of things will be done by the quality assurance. The quality assurance team will assure. It will apply some uh, certain certain uh, uh, procedures. They follow some procedures. They follow some standards by which they try to develop that particular product, which may not get caught with any error. So, in order to a product proactive like thing, in order to overcome. From being get caught with error, if they will follow some procedure, they will follow some standards. Whether all the standards that it is defined during this initial phase is successfully followed in this project, that sort of activity will be done by a QA. The test engineer will test these cases. For example, in this particular uh, table, uh, in a particular uh, product, we have a table uh, employee number 
defined as a primary key. Then if it is a primary key, it should uh, permit only the unique value. It should not permit a null value. It should not permit a duplicate value. So these sort of things will be done by the tester, whether the particular tool works according to our requirement or not. So that is uh, that phase is called as delivery phase. So this uh, test can be an automated test, it can be manual test. We make use of tools like JUnit. We make use of tools like Selenium to perform this test. Okay, now everything is perfect. Now what we need to do, we need to go for this uh, configuration management, CM. Okay, the deployment. So we need to go for uh, this deployment. So we have the source code maintenance. We have this build tool. We have artifacts to maintain this job uh, uh, particular this package and we have integration tool and we have uh, this uh, testing tool and finally we have we need to deploy in the production okay we need to deploy in the production then for deploying in the production so far uh, what we did so, so far the first phase uh, is in marks the developer quality analyst and testers next what we need from this point in the deployment, so here they need to provide a server. They need to provide the server. Okay, that is the infrastructure. The infra need to be provided. Then they need, need to configure the operating system. They need to provide a, configure these languages. They need to configure the tools. They need to configure some, some services, etc. etc. And this infrastructure uh, need to be ensured with a higher <laughs> Availability for that we need to go for configuring float balancer. We need to go for configuring this auto scaling capability. Everything need to be done by this team. How they can ensure? So, so this uh, taking this uh, once the code has been developed, taking the code and compiling the code, applying test and creating the artifactory and creating a package and implementing in the deployment. We need to go for a tool uh, called uh, CM. Okay. Configuration deployment, continuous deployment. So, for this uh, continuous deployment, we make use of a tool like a Jeff, we make use of a tool like a Puffet, we make use of a tool like Ansible. Okay, these are all tools uh, that we make use of for continuous deployment. Delivery means it is applied to this uh, QA and it is applied to this uh, test. And everything is perfect it is ready for delivery next it need to be installed in this uh, client environment uh, that is in our production environment then for that you need to set up the infra that that uh, infra setup has been taken care by this tool the buffer and ansible yet this infra can be set up by using this uh, additional tool for dockers uh, containers vagrant these are all some of the currently utilized tools uh, which makes this uh, infra automated. Okay. So here this continuous uh, delivery and this infra has been established. And after that, the once the product is uh, implemented in the production, okay, it need to be monitored, continuous monitoring. We make use of tools like Nagios. We make use of tools like uh, CloudWatch. Okay, if we are using this AWS to monitor. And all the things the customer uh, make use of uh, in this production and they give the feedback and based upon the feedback the process will be continued. So uh, this uh, way of uh, starting this uh, development okay that is a uh, continuous development and after that uh, the code is, will be continuous uh, compilation and the continuous integration and the continuous uh, testing and the continuous uh, delivery okay. So this is a called, a, we call this as a automated task, starting from continuous development and up to this continuous deployment and this process will continue. It is a life cycle. Then the, once it is deployed, we get a feedback and the feedback uh, based upon the feedback, this process will continue. This is the way by which everything will be automated. So this process of doing this automation uh, will be taken care by the engineer. That engineer is a DevOps engineer. This is the role play need to be played by the DevOps engineer. You no need to do any coding. You no need to do any testing. What you need to do? You are responsible. Uh, DevOps engineer's responsibility is to develop this particular structure, 
to make it a developer create the code and store the code and the code once it is successfully created need to be compiled and the tester need an environment to test the code and all the models developed by the developer need to be integrated and for deployment we need to go for the setting up the infrastructure then all this activity for each and every phase it, it involves a particular person to make all this in an automated manner the develop the devops engineer need to set up all this infrastructure they, they, it is a response they no need to go for a development they no need to know testing they need to set up the environment under which all the phases will take place okay so in this uh, devops what are all the tools that it is discussed uh, will be used here in our uh, usually in our curriculum what we will be dealing with so as i told in terms of uh, this operating system uh, 90 percentage of uh, implementation in real time is with the linux operating system we go with this uh, open to linux and in terms of uh, this uh, source code management scm or version control system we make use of uh, this uh, git and github and laterly if time permits i will let you know this bamboo it is atlassian product then we need to aware of base scripting okay we need to aware of some scripting language so for that day we can make use of a base cell scripting so here python if you know python it will be an advantage okay so for making this you need to aware of in terms of a web server so we are dealing with this non java web server apache we will be dealing with uh, how to configure the Apache web server. We will be dealing with how to configure this Java Tomcat web server and so on and so on. And in terms of uh, these databases, we will be dealing with MySQL databases. Our curriculum deals with MySQL databases. And in terms of uh, this uh, compilation, that is the build tool, we will be dealing with Maven. And in terms of uh, this continuous integration, we will be dealing with Jenkins. And in terms of uh, this configuration management, we will be dealing with two things. One is Ansible, which is most uh, very easy and most widely used. And we have a look through into Java. Okay. So, and in, in terms of uh, this automation, VM automation. Okay. We, we, we are aware of this concept of virtualization. We also taught you virtualization and how to make it automated. In terms of VM automation, we are going to deal with a new tool called as Vagrant. And to establish this infra, what do we do? So here we will discuss about this container, dockers and containers. In-depth discussion of dockers and containers or infra establishment. And for uh, monitoring, we discuss Nangios and we discuss the CloudWatch. And in terms of uh, this cloud, we will be dealing with AWS. Okay, so these are all the things uh, that is uh, associated with our discussion. Okay, is it clear? So now, we are going to start our discussion on this kit that is uh, here how to make use of uh, the version control system. The kit we are going to start our discussion. So before going into this, if you have any doubt, please kindly let me know. What are all the things that we have discussed? Is it clear to you? If not, yes, uh, we can, can uh, make a uh, verification. Uh, hi, Rajan. Come on. Yes. Now we are going to deal with this version control system, Git. So Git, what is Git? And what is GitHub? Git is a tool which is used for storing and managing the codes created by the developer. It is a tool for uh, the code management. So all the developer uh, associated with the project 
so may maintain the code and they will uh, deal with this uh, history of the code uh, using this tool git and where they manage they manage this code the code management the code management here in terms uh, where they store the code they store the code in the repositories so here there are two types of repository one is uh, the local repository the another one is the remote or otherwise called as a global repository okay so here where the local repository will be the local repository is configured on the, the developer's uh, machine itself it may be a desktop it may be a laptop here what are all the code that is developed by the developer will be managed in the local repository along with the, the history of changes each and every revision will result in a different different version may, they may have a version 1.1 1.2 1.3 like right? they may have multiple versions associated with the code associated with the particular developer one here if uh, the developer's own code uh, need to be shared with developer 2 or developer 3 associated with the projects those codes need to be managed in a central location okay that uh, central repository where all the codes are associated with the local local repository will be managed in a, the remote repository that repository is a github okay you can consider a github similar to that of a cloud storage which is a github uh, we have you need to create a github account under the github account you will be provided with the storage and all the data associated all the codes uh, all the documents uh, not only code everything that we can store with all the data that you need to maintain in a, in a central hub it can be stored on this uh, github okay here in github those codes can be stored either as a publicly accessible or as a privately accessible so if it is a public access, this Git and GitHub are open source. Okay, you no need to pay for making use of these tools and making use of this GitHub to share, store your uh, particular codes, to store your data if it is a publicly shared. If you want to maintain it as a private, then you need to pay for that. Okay, so GitHub is a repository, a global repository under which the codes are associated with a particular project it can be shared. Git is a tool which is used to create the code, which is used to maintain the code, which is used to uh, create uh, the changes associated with the code to maintain it as a separate, separate versions. Therefore, uh, this uh, Git is called a version control system. And GitHub is called a, a repository which is used to host this uh, version control system. Okay. So, version control system is nothing but a software. Uh, which a uh, tool we can call it as a tool which helps the developers associated with the project to work together and maintain the complete history of the work okay so the main intention is to maintain the what are all the, the complete history of the work that is done with respect to the particular project so it allows developer to share the codes developed by other developers okay that is allow developers so here to work simultaneously concurrently then here it does not allow overriding each other changes each and every developer so to allow developers to work together without any conflict okay that by means of uh, no overwriting of one scores uh, with another score it will maintain the history of all the changes used to maintain the history of all the changes done by the developers okay so these are all uh, some of the advantages of going for this uh, we can call this a technical term history of all the changes is nothing but tracking it is a tracking tool so here if, if you do a change then who did the change and what is the why the change has been done what is the reason why and when the change has been done everything has been recorded in the by the git okay laterally so if the developer one uh, leaves the company and the task has been carried out by another new developer developer uh, new developer and if you go into these uh, logs based upon that uh, he can able to find out uh, whenever uh, if the particular code is modified what is the reason it is modified 
and when it is modified who did the modification all other uh, things has been uh, tracked there okay these are all some of the advantages to keep track of all the things we make use of uh, this uh, sem okay so here in terms of uh, git has been concerned okay just we we can uh, manage uh, all sort of files not only this program files we can also manage this log files we can also manage this documents everything that we can manage using this uh, git not only this coding okay so here in the in this uh, pipeline in the devops pipeline this git plays a very very crucial role okay in this uh, devops here there are several several tools uh, starting from this beginning devops is uh, in this market uh, almost uh, as far as my knowledge from the year 2007 28 itself but it is gaining more popularity now okay because of these advantages it is gaining more popularity now and in terms of uh, this devops tools has been concerned we have uh, categorized into enterprise tools for which we need to pay for and we have this open source tools we no need to pay for this tool git comes under this open source tool and similarly we have uh, this svn subversion and we have this cvs these are all the old tools now almost uh, 90 percentage of today's users are going up with git because of its advantages for enterprise level we go for tools like perforce for this as a p4 and we have tools like clear case there are n number of tools these are all some of the examples of enterprise level tools okay so here what is the advantage of going for this particular git irrespective of all these tools why you go for git okay this advantage of going for git is git is a, a distributor it is not a centralized in terms of this version control system there are two types of version control system one is cvcs centralized version control system another one is dvcs distributed version control system here this git comes under the distributed version control system what is the advantage of this distributed version control system compared to that of the central version control system here in the central version control system here what happens here is we have a central server we have a central server okay so all the developers uh, working with the particular uh, system they need to store the code the history of changes in the code only on the central server what happens if the connection with this uh, central server get down then the developer need to wait they can't do any activity what happens if this uh, server machine get crashed once again all the change if they don't have the backup all the changes will be lost else if they have a backup uh, then using the backup they can recover back all the changes so this is the drawback here the developers uh, need to wait they entirely depends upon the server the central server to further work this is the drawback associated with this uh, central uh, distributor version control system whereas in case of uh, this distributed version control system we have all developers okay we have a central server that the, all the developers machine we have the same content what we have in the central server what are all the files what are all the metadata that is present in the central server will also be replicated on the all the developers machine and because of that it is not dependent okay if the developer may develop the code they may change the code they may store the code in the local repository itself they may here there is no repository only there is a central repository in the centralized server we may have a central repository under which everything has been stored whereas here each and every developer may have their own repository called local repository so what are all the content that is a central repository is replicated in the local repository also They, they are not dependent upon this central machine okay they are not dependent upon central machine okay so here the operations can be performed locally okay they do not rely on the central server they no need to do interaction with this remote server for each and every operation okay everything can be written everything can be stored in the, the developers local repository and later point of time it will be synced to the central server also because once it is synced then 
all other developer may make contact with the central server to make the repository updated with what it is currently present in the central repository so because of this thing here it provides a very very fast development okay it provides very fast without waiting for this central server it provides very fast development the first that is the main advantage of going for this distributor the second advantage is it is a you no need to pay for that it is a open source and it is free you can make use of it it is free okay so you may have one doubt in your mind okay if this each and every developer machine need to maintain the entire history of all the content that is stored in the central repository here too whether it needs a huge storage space no it no need a huge storage space a simple machine is enough why so because here it uses uh, some uh, compression techniques it uses uh, some compression techniques to store uh, the data here also it uh, uses the concept of the incremental backup concept we will discuss those things uh, during the case incremental backup it won't maintain a full backup it will maintain only the incremental backup concept by the way of adapting appropriate compression techniques by the way of adapting this incremental it can we, we call this as a lightweight git we call this as a lightweight because of the above set it won't occupy more storage space it will occupy only less storage space because of the key to part these are on entire reporting we use some compression techniques to store data in a compressed manner and if there is a change for example developer developer code on monday the code on monday may contain 100 lines and he did as a modification he added and some new 10 lines on tuesday here only the 10 lines alone will be taken as a backup on wednesday he had added further 10 lines 120 these 10 lines alone will be taken back it won't take the entire thing as a backup okay by the way of maintaining this incremental backup it occupies only less space that is the reason why it is called a lightweight so it is a fully distributed and because of it ensures high availability being it is not dependent upon this central storage similar to that of a central version control system each and every developer's local repository contain all the data that is present in the central storage it is open source and free you no need to pay for that it is lightweight why it is called as lightweight being it is adapting this uh, compression and incremental backup it occupies less storage spaces okay so here it is very very fast speed in terms of speed it is very very high why so because each and every action that we can do in the developers local machine itself you no need to depend upon the central server for each and every action that is a very very high speed and for it is very highly secure it uses a function cryptographic function called sha algorithm okay cryptographic hash function which is used to identify it used to maintain the data integrity we had already discussed about this data integrity the data that is stored ensuring that it is not subject to any modification has been termed as data integrity every file when it is committed for example on monday the file on that java will have a 100 lines if there is a change then we have a new commit id then the file on point on that java on tuesday is committed as 1.1 point on that java and wednesday it is committed as 1.2 point two that java so for this whether there is a change or not to make ensure we have a algorithm called sha algorithm a cryptographic hash function okay every committed will have a checksum and the checksum what happens in tuesday a file added with 110 lines of coding will have a checksum let me make it checksum x and when you read the file then at that time you are reading this file the tuesday file on sunday and when reading the file once again the checksum is computed okay if the checksum that you have computed is x that is this is at the time of uh, tuesday a checksum computer is let me make it the value 10 and at the time of reading once again the checksum is computed if there is no modification on the tuesday file and both the checksum will same even if there is a change in a single bit it will produce a different checksum value from this we can able to identify whether the code is modified illegally or not so these are all some of the advantages of going for this git 
Is it making sense? Or we have discussed? Uh, yes, Ramon, I have one question. Yes. Yeah, in this uh, the distributed VCS, every developer have a local repository in their ah. computer, right? Yeah, yes. So suppose if uh, all like uh, their project, there are three developers working on the project, every developer have a local repository. Yes. If they might be deleted their local repository, what will happen? Anything happen. You may, you have a... They can all... You have a copy on the remote repository. If developer deletes, if developer wants machine is down, and during the recovery, he can make a copy either from a central or from other developers repository. Big. Okay. 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 They can all they can always check out from the master. Yeah. That means from the central repository. Repository. We have a central. We have a branch by name master. Then this branch will contain all the information. Okay. They can uh, as of. Uh, they can take everything that is recorded here when they create a new repository here, workspace. We will discuss all those. Things. It ensures high availability, 24 cross 7 available of data, irrespective of failure to either a master or to a local repository. It doesn't matter here. Yes? Oh, okay, man. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Any other question? Kannan, Karthi, Kumar, Narayanan, yes. Uh, no, no, Raman, you can proceed, please. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Raman, I have a query. Yes. Okay. Uh, if yeah. any branches yeah. crashed out, right? Any? Maybe for any branches, actually. Maybe, for example, actually, uh, we have created uh, maybe local branch or master branch. Yeah. So, if any branches crashes out, right? So, how would we get our... If any branch has been down, we have a copy at the central, we have a, a replica, we have a snapshot taken. So the, how to recover from snapshots, uh, we are going to discuss in this uh, further classes. At any point of time, you have a snapshot of those branches, then the branches will be replicated, not only in central, it may have been replicated in uh, the local repository also. If both the thing has been trashed, okay, you have uh, this local maintaining the branch, then the central server uh, like a GitHub uh, will also maintain. The GitHub will ensure 24 cross server being it is managed by globally. So, so even though if you if, if sense that this uh, GitHub uh, down and your local repository down, you may have a snapshot. Using the snapshot, you can recover. Okay, that is all possibility. So the snapshot is uh, being controlled by the admin, right? Admin of uh, Git, right? Controlled by the admin associated with this particular project, the DevOps engineer. Okay, fine. Noted, Raman. So, Raman, uh, will we do any hands-on for all these tools? 100% hands-on. Now, today, I am going to discuss the concept behind and 100 to all hands-on will i will start with the installation today and all the hands-on will be done 100 percent as i told our curriculum deals with only around 20 to 30 percent theory for theory you need to be aware of the concept 70 percentage of our time will be devoted for hands-on okay more than 70 70 it is more than 70. okay yes now you know what is uh, git, what is uh, github, then uh, what is the different, what is the version control system, what is the difference between a centralized uh, version control system and a distributed version control system, then what are all the advantages of going for this uh, version control system like uh, git, okay. So we have started with uh, what is DevOps, uh, overview of uh, DevOps, what we have discussed in our earlier days. Then what do you mean by continuous development? What do you mean by continuous, uh, that is building? What is a continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous uh, delivery, continuous deployment? What are all the tools associated as been discussed? So before going to start with this uh, kit, we can have a break for five minutes. I will have a cup of coffee and be back at 10.15. We can continue to read from that. Yes? Okay? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, thanks. Nice.
we can meet now time is 10:05 we can meet again on 10:15 thank you get is a version control system it is a distributed version control system it is a open source version control system you don't need to pay for it uses the concept of a snapshot for recovering in case of failure okay so this version control the intention of this version control is to manage the changes that we made to the documents to the programs or it may be a logs anything so any collection of information what are the changes that is taking place in terms of times in terms of days that changes will be managed in the version control system these changes will be registered with the, the sub versions okay 1.1 1.2 1.3 like right? now how you detect the the change has been made for each and every program example on dot java initially we have specified system dot out dot print and uh, welcome okay so here for each once you commit this uh, on dot java here a commit id will be created okay a commit id will be created so as we told we have a algorithm called as a sha1 algorithm which is a hash function what this hash function will do so this hash function will take a input and it will produce a unique output it will take a input uh, then this hash function will compute something it will produce a unique value as a output for example in this case so let me take this uh, welcome is the input and produces a output a uh, unique value 6 if there is a chain all the thing are a small letter imagine we have a w changes into capital letter the content is not same it will produce a different output by the way if there is a change even in a single bit it produces a different output this is termed as commit id okay so based upon this commit id the new versions will be committed so this is the logic behind how it manages change and how it identifies the change has been made and after that uh, the change in the content has been uh, saved with a new copy type okay this is the way here it is uh, meant for uh, collaboration it stores all the versions what are all the versions that is uh, commit id 6 literally i changed welcome to welcome all we have a different commit id everything has been uh, stored in a repository we call this as a repository what are all the changes that we made start from version 1 version 2 so has been named appropriately and it is stored in a repository okay so here everything that we do is on our local machine and the same thing can be synchronized with this global server also global centralized server also so in case of any failure to this local machine we know also being it is a distributed we have the copy on all other local machine by the way we can ensure 24 cross 7 high availability whenever a local server crash you no need to worry about that i made another copy here in another server i made a copy in this global i can make use of it this copy in this recovery okay so these are all the way uh, by which I can ensure this high availability. If this particular version, if there is a change, we have uh, this uh, log ID, we have this commit ID. The commit ID will provide us uh, a proper information of what exactly has been changed, when it was changed, and who did the change, what is the reason behind this change was made, when it is changed, and who is responsible for the change. So that when you go through the project at later duration of time, you may have a clear idea of why it is a change. Okay. So we have discussed about various tools uh, like uh, CBS. We have discussed about a tool by name uh, Mercurial, Atlassian Protect. Okay. So we have uh, Periforce, etc., etc. Several tools out of which uh, we are uh, going to deal with a tool called uh, Git and, and the repository of data. Okay. So now in terms of uh, this uh, git terminology has been concerned we need to aware of the following terminology 
I will let you know how to install in Windows and how to install in Linux, any Linux. So installation of a Git in Linux is a very simple thing. Okay, you need to aware of this terminal. Terminal is that is associated with our discussion. Okay, you need to aware the architecture here is a client server architecture. You need to aware of what is client, okay, what is a server basic things. Then you need to aware of this repository. In terms of a repository has been concerned, there are two types. One is a local repository and another one is a remote or global repository. You need to aware of this repository. And third thing, you need to aware of this workspace. And we have another terminology, a stage area, staging area, where we will take a snapshot. Workspace where the developer works with. A repository where your file has been stored. Where you do this process, all the process. Okay, stage area where we take this snapshot. The snapshot that has been taken in the stage area is an incremental snapshot. Incremental snapshot. And we have uh, some commands uh, such as uh, here also we need to aware of another concept called branch under which a uh, uh, branch by name master is uh, mandatory and uh, other branches. This is the default branch. Imagine branches as a parent and we can have other branches also as of you like. Then apart from that you should aware of some basic commands like uh, commit, add, push, pull, okay, so locks, these are all some of the basic, then uh, check in, check out. These are all some of the basic commands that you need to aware of. Okay. So here it is a client server architecture. First thing. So the developer works with the machine. Those machines are a client. And we have a, a server, a repository. Here for this server, we can make use of this GitHub. In our client machine, we need to configure this Git. This tool is uh, doing all the activity. In the client machine, we have the workspace and we have the staging area and we have our local repository. Okay. So we have our workspace, we have our staging area and we have our local repository. Okay. These are all the three things that is associated with our client machine. The user, what do you need to do? He, the user uh, want to work with this uh, workspace. The area where the user is working is called as uh, workspace. And whenever uh, here in this uh, workspace uh, only, he do the, all the sort of activity. Okay. Imagine a workspace as a directory in a client computer. Here you will create all the files. Uh, he will do all the modifications. Okay. So then you will save all the files. Every activity that is uh, taking place in the workspace. So here, once uh, the file has been created, the file will be moved from the workspace into the staging area. Here in the staging area, let me imagine that you have a file on.java. You create this file in on.java. And after that, the file need to be moved into the staging area. How it move into the staging area? For that, we want to use this uh, git add command. The git add command, will take the file from workspace into the staging area. In the staging area, it will be taken a backup. Okay, it will take an incremental backup. It will make a comparison. Whether the file one the Java is already existing. If it is already existing, what are all the changes that is made compared to that of the current one Java and the previous one Java. And that changes alone will be taken as a backup. The backup that is taken here is this called as a snapshot. The backup that is taken here is called as a snapshot. Okay. So here the snapshot uh, is incremental snapshot. That means only what are all the change that is made 
that alone will be taken that is called incremental snapshot okay so here uh, yes now uh, backup has been taken in the staging area then from that uh, if i want to make the change permanently i need to push it into the local repository for that i need to make use of the concept from workspace we use a git app from staging area and to local repository we use git commit git commit command will take it from a staging area into the local repository so now the content is in our local repository what i can do if i want the change to be updated to this uh, server what i need to do so from this uh, client machine now these are all the actions that takes place in our client machine so i can issue a command called push command to push what are all the things that I did in this particular client? Client is nothing but the developer, machine where the developer is working. You can issue a push command, it will push you here. All this activity will be done on a particular branch. Okay. So in a branch, uh, let me take this branch as a master. This is the default branch. Or the, he created a file and he moved the file by using git add command into this uh, staging area. The staging area is the area where uh, that file is taken a backup. That backup is incremental backup. From the once it is taken backup, if you issue a git commit, that git commit will move the file, will commit the file into the local repository. Now, if you want uh, this uh, file which is present in the local repository containing all the metadata information, need to be synchronized with the server, you need to go for with a command called the push command. The push command will take all the metadata information associated with the master branch of that particular developer and it will place it in this server. If a developer 2 want uh, the same, then he can get those things by issuing a command called pull command. So push command is used to move the content from your local repository into the global repository. Pull command is used to retrieve the content from the global repository into the local repository. So these are all some of the basic terminologies that you need to aware of. Okay, if you have any doubt in this regard, please let me know. Here. So here we have another thing called check-in and check-out, I think, yeah, check-in and check-out. So the process of uh, bringing the file uh, from the local repository into this workspace, okay, so here is called a check-out, okay, check here check-in, the process of moving the file from this workspace into this local repository is called a check-in. So after now the file is in local repository, if the user once again want to do some modification, he want to bring back the file from local repository into the workspace, that is called a checkout. Check in and check out. Please make a note. The user gets the content and uh, here uh, from this uh, local repository into the workspace and you do some modification and after modification, you will move back back to this local repository. So, check-in is a process of getting the data from local repository into workspace. Check-out is the process of uh, moving the data again back. Okay. So, after that you can issue a push and pull command to move the data into the global repository. So, these are all uh, some of the things here. Whenever there is a change in the file, you did a change. Where you did a change? You did a change in workspace and after that what you do when you issue the add command the change will be recorded there as, and the file will be a, a new commit id will be created the commit id will contain whenever you make a commit a new commit id will be created and this commit id will let you know a message which contain who made the change when the change has been made what is the reason uh, behind this uh, modification has been done Everything will be listed there. Okay. So, these are all some of the ways by which uh, you can work with this, this particular thing. Do you have any 
with respect to this file status has been concerned, so these are all some of the basic terminologies. We will be doing the practical all the things. Then we will have a clear idea. You just make a note of we will once you do the practical, uh, you will uh, visualize what, what is a uh, uh, local repository, how you can uh, commit and uh, how you can add, how you can get the logs, everything that you can, so how you can push and pull, what are all the things that is specified uh, will be shown to you practically. So conceptually, if you have any doubt, please let me know before proceeding further. Uh, Raman, I have a, I have a query. Yeah. On the command, okay. Once, if whenever there is a change in any file, when we are about to move the file to master, is it is it uh, recommended or is it mandatory to use add command before committing? Definitely. In order to if and only okay. if if you issue an add command, then this mm -hmm. particular file will move into the staging area where it will be right. this pattern. Okay, 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 okay. Don't issue an add command. If you issue a push command. It won't uh, push the content into the global repository. Yeah, uncommitted file. Okay. Could okay. Into the repository. It won't break. Fine, fine. Understand. Okay. Yeah. So here, with respect to this, I want to let you know one thing. What are all the various status associated with these files? Okay. So you have your file uh, in your. Uh, working directory or workspace and you have your the next uh, staging area and later you have local repository okay so this corresponds to your global github Here, when you create a file, one dot Java. Initially, you won't have a copy of the file in staging area or in a local repository or in a global repository. Okay? So, here the files status, uh, when you issue this uh, git status, a command called git status, the files status uh, will be an yeah, untracked file. The first phase of the file will be an yeah, untracked file. So, because the file you have created in the developer's uh, workspace only, you won't have a copy in a local repository or in a staging area. It is an untracked file. When you issue a git add command, add file name, okay, here in this case one.java, the file uh, moves into the staging area. Now, the file uh, will be in a, once again, it will be in a untracked file okay so once it is moved into the staging area now it is a modified file now the file is a modified file or we call this as a staged file in staged file uh, it will take a backup okay it will take a backup of one dot java okay if you have already one dot java first time uh, it is a staged file okay now the file is a uh, untracked and it is a staged file and when you issue this uh, git commit the file uh, with the message you want to issue iphone uh, m the message what is the reason we can commit everything now the file will be moved to the local repository if you have your file known to local repository what are all the file present in workspace if it uh, is also present in local repository from untracked it moves into this tracked status. The file's status now become tracked file. Okay. If the content of the file is the same in both the workspace, on, on that Java 2, you have a welcome. And the same file in local repository 2, you have a welcome. That means the file is said to be an unmodified file. And you take the file and instead of welcome, you have add a Welcomes. Yeah, you have added a new letter S yes, to one dot Java. Now the content of the file uh, now will become a yeah, modified file. Why so big off? The content is not same. The file is uh, having its presence, 
both in workspace as well as in local repository but it is not same therefore it is a uh, under the status of modified file now you know what is untracked file you know what is a staged file and you know what is a unmodified file if the content is same and when you do a modification now call becomes a modified file. okay so these are all the various uh, now whenever you made a commit after commit the file is uh, committed a commit the status of the file becomes a committed file okay so these are all the various uh, states associated with this uh, file when it's uh, moved from yeah workspace into the local repository okay is it making sense first day when you create in a workspace then it is untracked okay so if you put the once the changes has been made if it is a put in this a staging area it is a staged file once it is a committed it is a committed file now the content of the file being it is the same in both workspace and uh, the local repository it is called a tracked file if you fetch the file and if you add some changes into the file adding new modifying existing now the file is become a modified file why so because it contains a content in workspace and local repository but it is a different different that is modified file okay so modified and modified tracked and tracked and staged and committed these are all the basic uh, six phases uh, associated with the web file okay you can uh, now we are going to discuss about the installation procedures the installation is very very simple you can go with this installation either in a linux or in a windows for windows installation both installation is supported here you decide your choice whether you go with linux or with windows you decide your choice in terms of windows you need to download a msi windows msi and simply you want to make a install click up it will go up with several options and at the end it will install git bash it will install uh, git guide okay you no need to do you just download whereas in case of linux you want to first make a update any command and laterly you can install git okay so linux uh, installation assume that uh, you have a ubuntu uh, version 16.04 we have discussed this uh, how to make it uh, using vmware as well as uh, the cloud instance So the first command that you need to go up with sudo apt hyphen get update. Next command simple sudo apt hyphen get install git hyphen go. That's all. This is very simple. Of installing a git in Ubuntu or any Linux is very very simple. Thing. You no need to worry about anything here. Okay, this is the way by which you need to make a installation. Yes, in terms of uh, okay, so get a iPhone code and you can make a verification. It took only few seconds to install. You can make a verification by simply typing git space iPhone iPhone version. So it will have a version 1.8 or 1.9 etc. Okay. Then so what you can do, you can uh, go up with uh, so it is up to your choice. Uh, this is a command which is for Ubuntu. You can uh, go for with the uh, send to OS or adapt the package manager. Okay, anything that you are interested. So here, if you want to install from Windows, you need to go up with this uh, downloading Git for Windows from the following set HTTP Git hyphen source code management sem source code management dot com download slash windows you can directly click on download git for windows 
that's all. It will take you to this uh, following site. Download it for Windows will take you to this uh, following site. Based upon your operating system, whether it is a 32 bit or 64 bit, you need to make a download. This file uh, will occupy around, uh, I think so, 37 uh, MB. Okay. Hit the download file. This is the file, yeah, 38 MB. Git iPhone, I have downloaded Git iPhone 2.16.2. Okay. So today only I have downloaded. You can find uh, the date uh, that is downloaded here is 3.3. So around the 9 a.m. I had downloaded this file. Being I had formatted my desktop, I had downloaded it. Okay. So what you need to do once it is downloaded, you simply want to double that. That's all. Double click. It will take you to the running mode. Okay. It will ask uh, certain certain questions. So no need to worry about these questions. Okay. You can simply type enter enter of all those questions. This is the way by which you can download the kit. Okay, so once it is downloaded, you may have a icon in your desktop. You can click on these all programs. Now you can find a folder by name git has been there and you have git bash, git command and git guide. Okay, so you are going to work with this git bash. If you click on git bash, it will take you to this git shell. It will take you to the git shell. So another way. You can uh, choose the working directory. This is the way by which you need to download. Okay. Yes. Is it making sense? How to download and how to connect with Git? Yes, clear. Yeah. So you can uh, create your own working directory. For example, I am interested in working in uh, I directory. What I need to do? Let me create a folder. Okay. So here, a new folder. Uh, let me create a new folder. Uh, yeah, I, I have maintained is uh, the DevOps lab is my folder. Okay, so let me make it as uh, D Dev lab or Dev git. Dev git folder. Okay, so move to the folder and simply right click. And here uh, you have a menu git guy here, git bash here. Click on git bash here. Okay, automatically under that particular location now you can find under the particular location you have the folder here. If you type your present working directory, you can find the under i colon you have the folder dev git. Yes. This is the way by which uh, you can uh, install git and you can work with this kit. If you type simply git space iPhone iPhone version, now you can find the git version for Windows. The git version for Windows. Okay, now is it uh, viewable to you? Can you able to view? Yeah. Okay, now this is the git shell. Okay, this is your git prompt and that you got here. So here, what do you need to do? So if you type the git space version, git iPhone iPhone version, it will let you know the current version. So you need to configure a repository. Okay, you need to create a repository. So in terms of uh, this repository has been concerned, as I already discussed, you have a local repository, you have a remote repository, here, and another uh, way by which you can differentiate your repository is you have two types of repository. One is a bare repository and another one is a non-bare repository. What is the difference between the bare repository? This bare repository is used for only store the file and it is used to 
share the file to other users that is bar repository in terms of this gis repository the bar repository is used for storing and sharing the file in non bar you can store the file you can modify the file whenever you need and you can share the file to others therefore in the uh, local repository need to be configured as a non bar why so because in local repository only the developer will uh, do the all the needed changes on the file and he will share the file the global repository that we are going to configure is a bar repository it is going to store and share the changes uh, to other users okay. these are all the way uh, by which uh, you can make use of your uh, repository as a uh, need to be configured either as a bar or as a non bar repository now i am going to create a repository so for this practice so i am going to create a bar repository i am going to create a, a non bar repository i am going to create a bar repository as well as i am going to simulate so here instead of going up with this github so i am going to simulate this environment using git itself i create a bar here that i am going to make it as a central a dot git repository name that i create a non bar workspace one as a non bar similarly if i can create multiple workspaces so workspace two that is going to be work with the developer workspace one imagine he is a developer one he is a developer two okay so here all the content of this developer is going to be shared under a name this is your name you can make it as any name so i had provided a name make it central a dot git that's all Okay, it is up to your task to design your name. Okay. This is called bar repository and this is a non-bar repository. How to create a repository? How to create a bar repository? How to create a non-bar repository? First, we share the present working directory that you are under i slash dev git. So here, let I create a folder by name, make directory central a dot git. And I move to this change directory central a dot git. Here I am going to make it as a repository by issuing a command git init bar. Now this repository will become a bar repository. Okay, git init bar hyphen hyphen bar. It will become a bar repository. If I simply create a git init, it will create a non bar repository. That's all. If I simply invoke git init, it will create a non-bare repository. Please make a note. This is the activity that I am going to do. So after creating this repository, I am going to so create this non-bare repository. How I can create a non-bare repository? I can use a command called git clone. I can use a command called git clone. I need to specify the source repository. I need to specify this uh, local uh, repository that is local workspace. So I am going to create a local workspace based upon this central a dot git. Therefore, what I need to do, I need to specify under i under dev git. I have a repository called central a dot git. I need to specify all the thing. I need to specify workspace one. The command that I am going to give is git clone. This is my source based upon central a dot git, and this is my target. A local workspace has been created. Okay. So if I after uh, getting into this, so I move into this workspace one. Imagine this is the workspace. This is the workspace associated with the developer one, and I create a file and do all the thing on top of it. Okay, let I create a file using vi editor vi one dot java. 
okay so i can get the status uh, git uh, status of the file now once the file is created it is will be unmodified file and i will be adding the i i, I will get the status of whether we have any logs if you have any commit then the commit will create a log id and all those uh, logs will be listed here so here being it is for the first time the log will uh, throw a empty and laterly i am going to add git add dot okay the file name now the file that is created on that java has been moved from developer one into the central a dot repository after issuing it add that command it will move into this central a dot git so after that what i need to do now if i get this uh, git uh, status now the file's status will be a staged file now after that i need to issue a commit uh, git commit iphone yeah, a commit message so one dot java creator is the commit message okay so these are all the practicals uh, that i am going to exhibit yes is it making sense now do you have any doubt you please let me know hi guys am i audible yes yes you can proceed by uh, yeah Simon, it's clear you please make a note of all those things Okay, now I create a directory, make directory, so that I make it as so any name. I I had given this name central a dot git. That's all. If you type ls, now you can find a, a folder a central a dot git. I am actually working in my git shell. Okay, bash shell. I have not configured any Linux here, but I can make use of this Linux command here. Now I can find a ls a central a dot git simply act as a directory. Okay. Now what I need to do if I issue this uh, git status or git log, it will throw you an error. Not a git repository, not a any parent directory. If you issue git log, it also shows that it is not a git repository. Then this git command can be applicable only on a git repository. Now just you have created a folder. What I need to do, I am my present working directory is uh, here. Dev git. I am going to move into the folder. Move to the central a dot git. Now my present working directory is I am under uh, i dev git central a dot git. Here I am going to make this uh, as a, a bar repository. The command is git init. Iphone iphone bar. So git init iphone iphone bar. Now initialized empty git repository. Yes, it is initializing the empty git repository, and it will create a repository as a bare repository. Now you can find once I issue this command git init bar, it is initializing the repository. Now you created a branch by name master. Being the repository is bar, it shows it is a master. All right, I clear. Now if I issue for example git log, okay, here your branch master does not have any commit yet. Initially, what it throw? It is not a repository. If I get this git status, once again I can't get any status from a bad repository. It can be in a non bad Operation will be done on a working thing. Now what I did, I have configured a central a dot git. Okay. Here what I am going to do, this is made as a bad repository. Therefore it is used for only sharing and storing the file. I couldn't able to create any file here. Okay, if I my type if I type present working directory and if I type ls, now uh, it contains uh, this is a repository. Initially, before uh, issuing this uh, git init hyphen hyphen bar command, so this sort of things is not there. It simply created as a directory. Now it is a repository. Okay, it is a repository which contains all the opposite information. Now if I want to 
create uh, look, another repository what i need to do i want to issue this command okay from central a.git i am going to create git flow okay i need to specify this the slash i full path slash dow git slash central a.git I am going to create a workspace one, WS one. Okay, I am going to create a workspace one. So it shows you appear to have cloned an empty repository. What I did, I have created a central a dot git, and with this central a dot git doesn't contain anything. Okay, this central a dot git is a global repository. It does not contain anything. Based upon that, I create a, a another uh, workspace workspace one using this clone command being it is uh, empty i didn't create any file etc etc it shows that you have appeared to have cloned a empty repository okay so this repository is a bare repository here you have created when you configure you have created a branch called master here too the same branch master has been created okay in your workspace what i am going to do I am going to move into this whole space and I create a file and do all the things on top of it. This is the so this sort of uh, thing can be done uh, on the tomorrow session. Okay. Um, huh. Is it clear what I did so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. Now if you take now you can find a WS. Okay. Into the WS, you can move to this WS one. And you can type ls. You can create a file here. If you type uh, git log, now you can find the master has not have any commit. Now if you take git status, now the status uh, since you have not created any file, it shows that uh, no commit yes, nothing to commit. You want to create a file, you want to copy the file, you want to commit the file. Okay, all other thing will be taught you to you or tomorrow. Up to this, if you have any doubt, please let me know. Okay. Yes, is it making sense what we have discussed so far? Yes, Rama, it's clear. Yeah. Yes, thanks. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Kumar, Narayanan, Master, Bala. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Rama, it's clear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tomorrow we will be having our session at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay, please. Uh, Rama, one thing. Hello. Nine, morning, 9 a.m. Uh, excuse me, Rama. Just one thing. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. We want to talk to you. Uh, what is the uh, number to which I can contact? Because the WhatsApp number is not reachable sometimes. The same number is my nine double four three four five four double zero two. Yes, eight eight five zero three two four three double eight. So nine double four three four. Five four zero zero two. Okay. You can call me. If you want to talk to me, you can call me today at one p.m. I won't be available for next thirty minutes. Sure, sure, sure. I will be going to my uh, daughter's uh, school to give her tiffin. Being today is holiday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. 